Uh, good afternoon. My name is Peter McCaig. I work in uh, Heritage, in the uh, data management team from the Heritage Directorate of Historic Environment Scotland. And today I'm going to talk about uh, the application of data standards to what we map. And actually, there's a lack of uh, consistent standards in a lot of the information that's created, especially from excavation trenches, geophysical surveys, and now through to the LIDAR. We actually need to have much better more robust metadata, paradata to explain and uh, make data accessible online to a wide range of users. So this initial slide is just showing one of my colleagues uh, doing a, undertaking a GPS survey of uh, up in one of the Western Isles. Here's the Canmore's a map. We started to define the areas around the, around the site so we know what the site, site extent is. But we actually have a lot of map detail and it's trying to make sure there's consistency in how that data is presented online. Uh, standards in uh, mapping go way back to 1920 with the uh, appointment of OGS Crawford to the um, Ordnance Survey to address an issue about the inconsistency of how people were referring to uh, archaeological sites on the Ordnance Survey map. So giant graves, druidical, druidical, druidical temples, uh, pitch houses, so it's to, remove, to address the issue of chaotic mixture of antiquarianism and speculation. So it's moving from the supposed Roman camp on the left to uh, a fort, consistent applied authoritative standard uh, terminology. And again, through the circle to chambered cairn. Though occasionally the Ordnance Survey still persists with distinctive names of Stonehenge will appear on the map as Stonehenge, Maiden Castle, and then Dungrugeg. Just got a spelling mistake in it. Uh, these are the, these are consistent data terms that we use in our monument for source, or can be mapped to those terms. Uh, and then how these things are depicted. Or the survey have a range of style shapes or uh, keys conventions to depict a range of archaeological features and non-archaeological features in the map. The data has to be consistent on the map. The commissions all had their own templates, their mapping conventions for their own publications. When the commercial archaeology units started, everybody was working with analog and paper reports. They all had their own house styles. It didn't matter, you were just referring to the book. You, 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 could, you could read the house style, you knew what it was depicting. We want to try and combine the data digitally. That then becomes a problem and everybody's got the different ways of depicting, calling the features they're mapping. Why is it important? Keith Ness Bros Brock project recently posted a Twitter thing. We're interested in creating an updated map of Brock's Keith Ness. And they've asked uh, the Twitter audience, would you like to see a stylized medieval Lord of the Rings style map? On the left, which is hand drawn, or a clean and clear version. <coughs> On the right, uh, one of the, the large GIS companies, Ezra, has produced an ArcGIS style, Pro style sheet that allows you to apply the style to any style to the mapping, as long as you've got consistent data standards to, 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 to depict, to say it's a, a fort, it's a, it's a forest, whatever. So you can create the map in whatever style you like. Uh, we, we use the Monuments Thesaurus, uh, Scottish Monuments Thesaurus, very similar to the, the English and the Welsh Monuments Thesaurus. Uh, we applied uh, the, the, the broad terminologies, the broad classification of domestic, settlement, um, agricultural, terms to, to our map field survey work from uh, the western uh, from the west of Scotland and this is just a map which just shows all the agricultural features shown in green but cartographically it's not a pleasing result we need to then refine it to pick out the features on the right we've used uh, a cartographer's style to, to pick out the, the land use, the banks and things that bring out the field, field pattern so we need to think a bit more about how, how the standards have been used and develop extra standards for, for the mapping depictions. Again, we surveyed the uh, World War II coastal battery in Argyll. On the left, we've had the monuments, the to it. We've got a range of different types of buildings which have got different hierarchies in the system. There's actually, it's all a military camp on the right. So in the middle, you can see all the different, different high level terms to use to describe the um, 150, 130 features on the, on, the, um, in the, on the survey area, but actually they're all military. So this is, this is just how, how, how that was rendered in uh, at both the English and the Scottish one with the Sorai. Where we have on the left the English one, which is the Scottish one, which defines the, the building component. It sits within uh, an unassigned building 
higher up, it's actually it's a military building. We need to improve our, our, our relationships between the uh, classifications. <coughs> and as I say, our, we, do, we, we used to undertake field survey. It's, we're no longer the sole people undertaking field survey in Scotland. There's a, a map, uh, an example showing the um, West of Scotland, West Coast Archaeological Survey Services survey of one of the islands on the western uh, west west coast, Alva, and an AOC survey of a shooting group. They're all recording the same type of information, but we're all applying them in house styles to that information. The underlying data should all be. We need to we need to make sure the underlying data all refers back to our standard terminology so that we can take one data set and merge it to the next. Why is this important? Uh, UK government recently launched the National Geospatial Strategy, which is about making a lot more value out of geospatial information. We need to make sure our information is available, accessible in an understandable format by 2025, because the expectation is everybody will be accessing spatial data services online. And we have a uh, precedent for this, the Inspire Director from the early 2000s. Uh, defined a series of um, data sets that needed to be released for um, to, to, to allow public administrators to um, support a range of uh, environmental policies and activities which may impact upon the environment and they defined specifications for the um, protected sites, the scheduled monuments, the listed buildings. That led to the publication of our designated data sets online through web map services, web feature services which people can then take and use in their own system. So we have a uh, Historic Department of Scotland uh, spatial uh, download portal where you can access the, uh, the metadata describing the disability data set, web map services, WFS, web feature service, and uh, an atom feed. This is, this is about the application of the standards to, to make the data available so people can use consistently. We use the same data in PASMA, which is our, our, our portal for providing information to the public. They can see a range of our own designation data sets, but we also bring in the um, historic environment records, most of the historic environment records, which are developed to the NIGA standard. And then the, 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 a subset of that data is specified through Historic, Scotland, historic Environment Scotland template at the moment, but we're working with the Improvement Service to, to collate the data. Uh, to inspire a compliant data set to provide on to pass map as web map service, web feature service. And again, we work with the, the local authorities and other uh, uh, agencies in the historic environment in Scotland through the shared strategy to encourage and promote data standards. Uh, so we've bit with uh, documentation spatial data standards and then sp the, the technical specifications for the, the site areas and areas of archaeological interest that we define. So we're working to improve our data standards uh, with spatial information, but we need to do much more. We look at our colleagues in uh, the British Geological Survey. Uh, they have a 10-year-old project called One Geology, which is again a European partnership. It's actually a worldwide partnership, pulling together data to describe the geology of Scotland. And they have a simple mess message. They want to make a web set, make the best available geological data available in web accessible format at the best possible scales. And I have to go to the one geology site to get uh, an idea of where, where Wessex archaeology in this case have undertaken a remote sensing survey of one of the uh, Spanish Galleon wrecks, the Tobermory wreck in uh, Argyll, and then this one at the Campania. That requires the information to be gathered, collected to, data, to, to data a certain standard to make sure the data is consistent. And my distal's address, spatial information, says accurate knowledge of the position in the, in the space of heritage assets, central to understanding and management, which is fine, it's very, very laudable, but actually the application of that is not great when we, we look at the information. We have a, we have a site, Scarab Bray, where we have a grid reference. Often the grid references are not recorded uh, completely, they can be incomplete, they can be mistyped. One digit, two digits, just moves by a few meters. Quite often, we find they're in totally the wrong map square, so it moves 100 kilometers. Um, they often include the um, numeric code for the 100 km square. So again, everything moves by a huge distance, and information be expressed as that low. With with our maritime record, we actually also need to record the datum to understand how that lat long was recorded, was captured. It's very important to understand the projection that you're using. 
And then highly related to administrative areas, again, there's a lot of uh, mismatches there. So actually we need to make sure the standards are much, much stronger to enforce accuracy of the, the, the point data. And actually, when we think about points, we actually should be defining the extents by default. When people go out and do survey work, they should define what they're mapping. It's no longer, it's useful for a distribution map, but actually you're on the ground, if the, 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 the sites cover a much larger area. And the area features have their own issues. They've got quality of the data capture, for somebody's using uh, a high, 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 high level uh, digital uh, GPS survey. You get a much better quality mapping than a, a recreation GPS. Capture scale during field work is important. It's very different from a generalized plan used in a publication. And we should be using the born digital data to enhance our records rather than just taking the, um, the data from a report georeferencing and then uh, trying to best fit to map. It introduces errors throughout the way. And um, final look is the area features. Again, my just describe, describes areas in terms of landscape and things, but it is mainly about the event information, the geophysical surveys. And it defines the units of information, which is fine. It requires identifier. It also requires who did it, when. The, the big bibliography, map depiction, date and period, actors and roles, all fine. But we're now moving into a world of digital data, which is much more than um, just monuments. This is the Scottish uh, Government's uh, remote sensing portal for LIDAR data. You can go online, you can download the data. Um, they have a template which just tells you the basic things. It tells you the resolution that the data is captured at. But what's missing is, and what's mostly missing from the slide, is the, the additional information that the archaeologists need to be able to take, understand, use and process that data. Uh, and we can combine that into a single data set from an AOC survey in KFNES. It's about the metadata that describes the technical processes to capture that data that we need to process the data. And the same is applied to geophysical survey data. If you know the resolution, you can assess the quality of the data fit for purpose. LiDAR data is also interesting that you can visualize the data in various separate ways. We actually need to start to think about the processes that we use to interpret the data. And then finally, the analysis, the information that we're pulling out of the data sets. <coughs> so, Spatial data standards matter. They, they, we need them to be, uh, uh, they're needed to, to show how things are displayed consistently and accurately. They may not be the same sta standards as we use in our databases. They need to fit for purpose. Um, we just have to get better in how, how we tell and instruct people, lead, provide leadership and how, how these standards are applied. Thank you very much.